Where is it? I shan't ask you politely next time. <laughs> Where's my parcel from Oliver Brown? Kai! Kai! Cairo! What the bloody hell's it doing in Cairo? I live in Wiltshire. Cards. Yes, I use my credit cards. Hit me. Well, if you insist. <laughs> One chance. Where's my parcel from Oliver Brown? Marie! Ask Marie! Customer services. Who are you? Oh, hello. Uh, my name is Ballard. Blair Ballard. I love the new DHL uniform. Is there something I can do for you? Well, actually, there is, Marie. I'm looking for my parcel from Oliver Brown. I was told that you could help me out. Speak up, dear. I can't quite hear you. Actually, there's just a knock at the door now. That's my parcel arrived safe and sound. You're an absolute legend. Crisis averted. Thanks a lot. This never happened to the other fella. Welcome friends, welcome friends, welcome one and all. Blair Ballard here for the Bond Vivant. I hope you're all in fine form. Today we're going to be talking about all of our brand's brand new 007 Heritage Collection. Now, if you remember, all of our brand exploded onto the Bond scene back in 2012 when Daniel Craig was seen sporting a pair of their lovely setter shorts in Skyfall. We all breathed a collective sigh of relief that we had a pair of uh, swing shorts that we could wear that weren't budgie smugglery like the ones he wore in Casino Royale. Since then, back in 2018, they actually formed a collaboration with E.ON and produced a set of four shorts based on iconic uh, poster art, which, although not my bag, were very, very popular with, uh, with us guys in the community. Now, last year, they had something slightly more exciting where they produced a range of clothing inspired by iconic uh, pieces from a Bond, a Bond back catalog, including this one here, obviously, from Diamonds Are Forever, the white shirt. But also we had a Roger Moore safari shirt, we had the onesie from Goldfinger, and we had uh, shirts like the camp collar shirt from Thunderball in pink, and a variety of shorts as well, which were quite fun, the Thunderball shorts, and I, I had a pair of Goldfinger shorts as well. Anyway, just our last week, they launched their third wave. Now, is this gonna be a hit, um, eh, or a what the? Let's check it out. So let's start out with the pieces that I absolutely adore from this new collection. Number one on my list is this wonderful camp collar uh, shirt from Thunderball. It's absolutely stunning. This is the shirt that you see uh, Connery wearing in the scenes in Jamaica. First of all, when he's with Lighter and he meets up with Paula and Pinder in the market square on the way to seeing Q, who uh, drops off his underwater camera, his Geiger counter watch, the rebreather, the radioactive pill and the distress flare. It's really beautiful. It's an Italian, uh, Italian linen. It's got a mixed weave. I've got to thank my friend and yours, Matt Spazer, from the absolutely essential Suits of James Bond website for some of the insights for these, uh, these shirts. This um, is a mix of navy blue and a lighter blue that's woven through it with specks of white. It really does, I think you'll agree, pop in the sunlight in the pictures you see outside. It's got quarter inch stitching. Connery's had four large white buttons uh, going down the front. Well, this has five smaller mother of pearl effect buttons. It's got a shot vent at the side. It's got the 007 logo very discreetly, um, as is the way with this collection, on the back of one of the All of Our Brand labels. So it's very discreet uh, branding from All of Our Brand, which is what we come to expect. It really is a lovely shirt to wear outside. It's very, very light. It does wrinkle slightly. Um, but I think that I have to agree with Matt Spazer's appraisal that the one that, that Connery wears in the film is slightly pyjama-y. Only Connery could really carry it off. This one actually improves on that. So this is one of the occasions when uh, all of our brand really have pushed the envelope and actually made a shirt that was better than the original. Anyway, let's check out what's next on the list. 
This is uh, all about Brown's take on the, uh, the shirt that Sean Connery wears in You Only Live Twice, the scene set in J Japan in the Q branch there where he's got the cigarette rocket and they're learning about ninjas for the first time, which is super exciting. It's a really lovely, light Italian, 100% poplin uh, cotton. It's really lovely and soft to the touch. I'm wearing a medium, which is the size I normally take for all of our brand clothing. It is slightly fitted. Uh, you'll see it's got some darting on the back, which uh, does give you a nice silhouette. But unfortunately, with my pandemic diet, I'm filling this out rather more than I would like to. Um, I'm wearing this with some gray trousers that are actually from Skyfall. These are the acne trousers that uh, Daniel Craig wears in the scenes in Shanghai when he's waiting for the arrival of Patrice in the airport. And they're going well with my sandals I'm wearing to really complete the Connery look. But it really is a lovely shirt. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, the color is called Rosebud apparently. It's a whisper shade of pink. I've never worn a pink shirt before, but it really does set off the grays and it would set off a blue jacket, I think really nicely as well. Right, it's time for another favorite of mine from the collection. It's another camp collar shirt or Capri collar as they're known uh, in all of our brown. But it's such a nice day. Let's take this outside. This is one of my favorite pieces from the collection. This is a shirt based on the one that Sean Connery wears in Thunderball when he's in the helicopter with Lighter looking for the Vulcan bomber and then also hovering above the Palmyra estate looking down at the shark pool no less. It's in a lovely cotton and linen blend woven in Spain. It's 100% cotton. It's a lovely broad butcher stripe shirt. It's got a nice chest pocket here which is quite handy. It's made in Portugal. It's a, we call them camp collars, but the official name from all of our brand is the Capri collar. It has obviously as well has the little detailing down here with all of our brand, but because it's part of the Bond heritage line, if I turn around, you can see it's got the 007 rather subtly done there. So it's not going to be too in your face. So you can be fairly clandestine in your love of Bond. Nobody's going to know unless they know. But altogether, really lovely made shirt. I do like the fact that the actual material is not, is slightly woven there as well. It's beautifully done. It's very light, absolutely perfect for, for lounging by the pool and moseying up to the bar. Now this shirt might give you a clue as to what we're gonna have a look at next. It's again, another favorite piece from the collection. We're gonna take it outside, but just to let you know that I took a 32 in the trousers and I took a size medium in the jacket. And remember, I am a 40 inch chest and a 31 inch waist. The trousers were slightly on the snug side, so you might want to size up maybe one size there. Let's go outside. So we're back outside in our mock uh, tropical landscape here to give us a test drive, to see it out in the wild as it were. The suit itself is made of a 57% linen, 43% cotton twill gabardine. It's in a lovely cream shade that the All About Brown call matched it, which very, very, very closely imitates the suit that George Lazenby wears in the scenes when he's entering the Palazzo Hotel just after the opening credits. It's got a single vent at the back, which is a bit of a shame really, because uh, the actual one in the film was a double vent, and I do like a double vent. I'm wearing it with the Sean Connery uh, pink shirt from the collection because of the pink shirt that uh, George Lazenby wears in the film. Um, it should be worn with a tie, technically, but I think this shirt, this um, the suit is so casual, I don't think it really can handle a tie, except maybe for a wedding. Okay, next up, pop quiz hot shots. Which Bond villain wore these particular sunglasses in a Bond movie? Pop your answers in the comments below and we'll see who comes out on top. Now these next two pieces have caused quite a stir on all the forums. Are they for your eyes only? Are back in the wild with the t-shirt that's supposed to emulate the t-shirt that Roger Moore wears in the scene with Melina Havelock just before they're about to be thrown into the sharks by Ari Kostatos. It's a very divisive piece this. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's got some lovely detailing here. It's got a lovely v-neck that's not too deep so we're not going to be too self-conscious wearing it. It's 50% silk, 15% uh, cotton. It's very, it's not too hot to wear, I and mean, it's a very hot day today. It's 32 degrees centigrade, which is extremely hot, hottest day of the year for us. And yet it feels nice and airy. I'm wearing it with the For Your Eyes Only shorts that technically Roger Moore didn't wear in the film. There's a still photograph that all of our brand have posted of him wearing the blue t-shirt and white shorts. But if you look at the film, he's actually wearing long trousers, maybe to hide Roger's modesty. So yes, there are 51% cotton and 49% linen 
mix. They've got a lovely hand polished uh, metal fly and they've got a, a button down loop detail you can see on the belt there, which uh, means you could thread a belt through, I think, but it's just a nice, nice little touch. But they're super comfy, not too short, um, and just about right for, for going to the bar afterwards. Right, so we're back inside now. This piece in particular has been very popular on the forums. I think it's this collection's Thunderball uh, Merino Wool Polo, if you remember from the last collection. It's very, has that same sort of vibe. And this is, I think, one of the most popular ones on the forums. It's certainly been flying off the shelves in the store and online. It's uh, all of our brand's take on the Moonraker shirt that Roger Moore wears when he's in stealth mode, when he uh, is in the chateau with Corinne Dufour and uh, he finds the, uh, the safe thanks to her help. You have a heart of gold. Remember that bit there? And also when he breaks into the secret biological lab where they're making the files of uh, nerve toxin that are gonna go into the big globes that go up into space and could cause the end of humanity. Right, it's a merino wool, it's 12 gauge merino wool, it's knitted and made in Italy with a lovely rib collar and it has a chevron detail on the rib cuffs and on the hem. Now, unfortunately for me, this is where the collection starts to lose its way slightly. In the blurb online, you'll hear phrases like inspired by or evoking or our take on or reimagined, which is fine. As long as there are little, little key signatures we can look at and go, ah, yes, that's right. This top is lovely. It feels great. It's got a good cut. It's got a slight bondy element to it, but I couldn't pick it out of a lineup. If you had this on the shelf and said, right, which Bond film is that from? You go, mm, I'm not too sure. The shirt in the film has a pocket here, a frog mouth pocket, it's crucial to the plot because that's where Roger Moore puts the vial of nerve agent. He's, he's there when he has his fight with, uh, with Char and he's got to check this pocket as well. It's quite integral to the plot. Where is it? And also this collar, I know it was a shirt he wore in the film and I know it was in an era where big collars were, were very fashionable, but I couldn't, I couldn't say that's the Runeraker top. If you go and look at the the camp collar shirts from Thunderball. You can go, yeah, Thunderball, I get it. No worries, the color's slightly different or it's slightly better, better fitting, but I get it. If you look at the Roger Moore um, jacket from the last, last collection, the Safari jacket, you go, that's Roger Moore, done and dusted, job done. I don't think that all of our brand trusts us. I mean, last season they had the onesie from, from Goldfinger. I mean, that shows amazing trust and balls, if you don't mind me saying. It shows that they get the Bond vibe. Now, looking at the collection before it came out, I was going, there's nobody's going to buy that. But they flew off the shelves. People loved it. All of our brand have to trust us more. Now, also in this collection, there are a few pieces. There's a shirt that uh, evoke, evokes the, the shirt that Roger Moore wears in The Man with the Golden Gun, just as he's meeting high fat. It's a kind of creamy colored shirt, slightly big collars. You go, okay, cool. That's a nice rib, de uh, you know, nice detailing, nice uh, sort of uh, catches and so on on the, on the sides. But the shirt in the collection is a camp collar shirt again. And you're going, where is the connection between that sh this shirt and the shirt that is in the film? There isn't one. Sometimes in this collection, it looks like all of our brand have gone, we've got this shirt, let's try and shoehorn a reference into a Bond film. Us Bond fans, if we can't see where, you know, at least the idea or the concept of a shirt has come from, it leaves me cold and I'm really sorry. I love all of our brand stuff. My wardrobe is full of their stuff. I've been buying it since the off. I wear it all the time. But you know, the mantra for all of our brand is feel summer, you know, feel beachy. Well, when I put a, a top on or a pair of shorts, I want to feel bondy, like feel Bondi beachy. I'm, I'm wasted, I'm so wasted. But you know what I mean? You put on something, you go, oh, you kind of have that inner bond moment. And you kind of go, yeah, it's a bit cheesy, I know, but you want to feel mm, like that. The other piece in the collection, don't do it for me. Now, I do like this. I do like this, this top, but it doesn't scream Bond. 
if Daniel Craig, for example, imagine this, if you're watching a new Daniel Craig film, would he wear this? Could you see him wearing this? I suppose you could see a tenuous link there. You could think, okay, a modern iteration of it. But all of our brand have done a top very like this that would tick all the boxes for the Moonraker shirt. It was called the Mortimer, I think, and uh, David over at the Bond Experience did a review, and I bought it because it was great. It had big collars, and it had that Frogmath pocket. Yes, the material was a bit too thick, uh, and they could, but they could adapt it. It just shows that they, all of our brand are not afraid to push the envelope. Yeah, having big collars on a shirt, not a problem. We can take it. The first collection showed that. The problem I have with this collection is that the main pieces I like are the ones that you think are the safest. The cap collar shirts, they are job done. There is one shirt that I really, I'm so sorry for those who've bought it or maybe like it. We have two Thunderball shirts, which I've shown you already with a cap collar, brilliant, lovely. There's a third shirt the shirt that, uh, that Connery wears when he's in the helicopter, and it's a gingham shirt, yeah? It's another camp collar shirt. If all of our brand had just put a gingham shirt with the camp collar, job done. But no, they have to shoehorn in their terry toweling into the collection. Now, it's come out looking like a dog's dinner. It looks like something my daughter wears to school. It's not a good look. It's really not a good look and a missed opportunity. It could have been a slam dunk, slam dunk, but it wasn't. It's getting a lot of negative uh, reports and reviews online, and I'm really sorry for that. Another, another piece from the collection, another shirt. In the f last collection, we had the Dr. No pale blue shirt. It was a bit bright, but it was toweling and it was lovely, okay? They have a similar shirt, well, their own, another version of the Dr. No shirt in this collection, and it's a cream color. Now, it's based on the German lobby cards that were not, because they were all hand colorized in those days, and the Germans, for whatever reason, didn't color the shirt in blue. And the trousers were a bit off as well. But all of our brand have used that for their shorts, in fact, um, for the printed shorts. But also they put, brought this shirt in for this collection. And you kind of go, all right, I'll give you that. It's, there is some tenuous link to the one in Dr. No because there was this picture of this lobby card. Okay, I'll give you that. But this week, All About Brand have released more reimagined shirts. They're the Dr. No shirts, but in olive green and a deep burgundy. And I'm going, what is the connection there? Now, my other problem with this collection is the pricing. Some of the pricing is a bit punchy. Now, first up is that shirt, the t-shirt from Free Your Eyes Only. Now, they could have done just a nice sort of v-neck t-shirt. They've got loads in their range, get the color right, charge us 100, 150 quid or whatever they really want to, to charge us that. We would go for that. Not a problem. Now, they up their game and they, they've made it into a half silk, half cotton shirt. It is beautiful. It's got the lovely details, which I showed you earlier on, but they want 245 pounds for what, okay, it's a jumpery t-shirt, but it's basically a t-shirt and it's not even 100% silk. It's half silk and half cotton. Now, when this takes me back, in fact, to the Tom Ford uh, shirt from Spectre that, you know, it wasn't, you know, silk, it was just viscose or rayon or something. But we all bought it because it was in the film. Yeah, and that was 400 quid. And we thought, oh, okay, oh, I'll go for it. This shirt is kind of emulating, and, but it's not in the film. So it's a lovely piece and I've got it in my wardrobe, but it was 245 pounds. A lot of money. Now, I understand that all of our brand have got this collaboration with Eon and Eon charge for the licensing. They don't allow, you know, they put the 007 James Bond logo on everything from duvets to lunch boxes. I get that. And Eon want their slice of the profits. Fair enough. But when you're charging £245 for a t-shirt, all the prices seem to have gone up on the website. I don't know what's going on, but 
I know it's a business. I get that they're a business and they've got to bring money into the coffers. And so they're pushing the range a little bit too far in my book. They should trust us. They should be more adventurous. They should be doing more of the, the safari jackets from the Roger Moore era. In fact, what I'm worried about is that with these new reimagined uh, Dr. No shirts, what they are doing is metaphorically putting the 007 logo on a metaphorical lunchbox. It's not connected to the film. They're just trying to get more revenue in. And that kind of smarts a little because I love all of our brown. As I say, I've got a wardrobe full of their stuff. I wear their stuff all the time. Big fan and I hope they produce some more bits. And with that in mind, let's think about what they could do for the next collection. Now, a lot of people would like to see the powder blue leisure suit from Live and Let Die that Roger Moore wore in the film, on Sam Monique, in fact, in the next collection. I think it's a great idea. It's got that feel summer vibe. It's definitely something all of our brand could pull off, I think. Now, some of the guys on the forums have said, well, you've got to be careful reproducing or emulating some of the pieces that have been in the more recent films because the companies are still around and they might have issues with uh, their pieces being emulated, as it were. But what about clothes that we don't know who the maker was? Like the rugby shirt that uh, Daniel Craig wears at the end of Casino Royale and the Venice scenes. That would be an ideal opportunity for all of our brand to swoop on in there and snatch the prize. Sticking with Casino Royale, what about the Madagascar shirt that he wears in the amazing free running sequence at the beginning of the film? Or indeed the white shirt with the little funky epaulettes he wears when he visits the Ocean Club in the Bahamas? Or maybe all of our brand could take us back to the Dalton era and give us a blues on to go with our N. Peel Living Daylights polo. All of our brand have some other swimwear options they could explore. How about the black shorts that Pierce Brosnan wears in the hotel in St. Petersburg just before he meets Famke Janssen in Goldeneye? Or indeed the other pair of swimming trunks that Daniel Craig wears at the end of Casino Royale, the black ones with the burgundy and white stripe. They've never been identified, so they could be something that all of our brand could jump onto as well. But what about the girls? That's another market that all of our brand hasn't touched. How about the iconic Ursula Andress white bikini, or indeed the homage that Halle Berry gave us in uh, Die Another Day? They'd be fabulous for our Bond girls in our lives. Absolutely wonderful. But if all of our brown are absolutely insistent on squeezing in some toweling into their next collection, how about some of the other iconic uh, uh, pieces of clothing that have been worn by the bad guys? What about Auric Goldfinger's uh, gold leisure suit with the white toweling lining? Or indeed, if you can remember from Thunderball, the henchman uh, Quist, the one who gets thrown to the sharks for failing Largo in capturing uh, Connery, that had a toweling lining as well. That could be another option to go for. But what's at the absolute top of my wish list for a future Eon All About Brown collaboration? Well, it has to be the blue Brioni floral print shirt that Pierce Brosnan wears in the Cuban scenes in Die Another Day. I think that's absolutely prime time All About Brown material. So, what have you learned today? Well, I think All About Brown needs to trust us. We are their market. They need to push the envelope and give us something exciting in the next collection. Anyway, for now, if you've liked this video, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and also turn on notifications so you'll be all set for the next video when it comes out. But for now, it's been Blair Ballard for the Bond Vivant, bidding you a very Bond farewell. Stay safe, friends.